this chapter is on uh, inferential, uh, inferential analysis and particularly how tidy model tools can help you with that. Uh, so tidy models basically is not about statistical inference. So it, it, it has some tools to help you, but it's, it's not its main focus. So my feeling was that there are many tools that that seem useful but but i didn't feel like okay there's this consistent way or there's this way that you should do this and that's all rather it's like bits and pieces for me at, at least uh, yeah okay so so there are like three more specific tools that we will talk about. One is uh, the tidy methods from the broom package. Uh, another one is the infer package, which is like, it's I think the, the biggest uh, piece in the toolkit. So it's it's dedicated package for statistical inference. There are the bootstrap and uh, regression intervals functions in the R sample package, which is like a small part of, of that package. And the fourth one is actually like a more general way, which is about, I think Daniel would appreciate this, especially that, uh, what can you do if for part of your workflow you use uh, tidy models, but for another part, you want to use some function that is not, or model that is not fully supported by tidy models, and and we will see that how can you how how can you work with with tidy models objects in in that case and still still leverage some functionality. Okay, so. To, to demonstrate the functions and tools in, in for this chapter, I chose the Tidy Tuesday data set from two weeks ago, I think, or three weeks ago about ultra trail running races. Uh, so I don't know if, if you are familiar with it. Uh, so this is a like about uh, uh so yeah so pretty long races and there's a, the data set i will show the did you do this with federico the tidy tuesday ultra running um i i know about the data set because i do tidy tuesday uh i don't know i, I didn't understand the question oh because i i see you do tidy tuesday every week so i was wondering if you if you did this on okay, twitter this then, time then you are familiar with it Yes, yes. Um, I, yeah, okay. I, I, I've used it twice this week. <laughs> so. Nice, nice. Yeah, we are okay, really okay, cool. Yeah. Then, then, then you are familiar mm. with the data. So I will use just part of this, like uh, the distance and elevation gain uh, for each race. Okay, so I will go back. So I just did a like a small data set that. It's, it's like just like a toy example, not, not like a really interesting modeling. But the thing is that I calculated the time of the top ten uh, racers for each each race. So uh, and then I filtered for. Uh, races with solo participation. Uh, there were some examples with, with zero distance, which didn't make sense. So, so I joined this and what we, what we will work with mainly is that for each race, uh, we have a distance, an elevation gain, uh, uh number of eight stations and uh, 
and time in seconds, which is again calculated from the top 10 uh, runners. And I calculated the, uh, it's stupid, so it, the, the, the average uh, elevation gain, which is elevation gain per distance and the velocity, which is distance per time in seconds. And I, uh, so I converted this to, to distance per hour. Uh, okay. Yeah, so, so we will use this, this data set. Okay, so let's jump in. So, so one of the tools is the tidy method from the broom package. And its aim is to, in my understanding, is to provide a predictable outcome for, for many, many different models and st statistical tests. So it supports like 150 different kind, different models and tests also from Bayesar and also from, from many different packages. So it, it's quite extensive. And basically if there's a new model or test, then if you provide a method for it in, in the Broom package or in, in another package, then, then you will have a, a consistent interface, but it's, it's not like magic. So you, you have to define that, okay, for this particular model, how do I tidy it? One thing is that the result is always a table. And another is that it has consistent column names. So for example, the uh, P value is also, is always called P dot value and, and things like that. Uh, they claim that it's most useful for analyzing, visualizing multiple models or tests. So, 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 so if you have a single model, then you can just look at the result and it does not really matter whether, matter whether it's a list or a table. But if you have to combine a lot of different models, for example, which you gain the tuning or bootstrapping or something like that, then it, it will be much easier to, to combine it. Uh, I wanted to note that in throughout the book, we didn't meet with this tidy function a lot, but I think it's partly because it's used a lot internally by other tidy models functions. So usually we, we, we call functions like predict, fit, uh, fit resamples, uh, tune grid and stuff like that. And they already present that table, but it's because internally they, when they fit models and, and things like that, they already call uh, tidy on, on those. So, so that's why we don't need to directly use this so, so often as, as I understand. So it was also a bit confusing for me at first. So for example, there's this uh, tidy method in the parsnip package for a for a fitted for a fit model object, which was used in the book. Uh, so so like the broom package has a tidy method for a lot of object uh, models, uh, but also other packages can provide a tidy method for their own data structure. For example, the workflows package has a tidy method for a workflow with a fitted model inside. And the parsnip package also has a tidy method for an object created by parsnip and, and so on. So, so different packages have their own, own tidy tidy method, but the logic is the same as, as, as the broom package. Do they import the broom packages tidy and build on it, or do they just make their own? Uh, uh, there are multiple examples. So as I understand, actually, they pulled out this, like the generic to a, to a 
a different package. So I think this, this generic package, if I understand correctly, has like this PyD and glance and, and, and augment defined. And then Broom refers to it and also other packages refer to it. That makes sense. Uh, but another example, which is a, like a higher level function, which we will see later, this, this regression intervals, which is about uh, creating bootstrap samples and then fitting models and then tidying the, the model coefficients and presenting that to you. So this is a, quite a high level function in the R sample package. And this function directly calls the tidy method in Doom. So, so this is one example I found, which, which uses the Broom package. And in other cases, they just like, they provide a tidy method, which could be in Broom, but it's, it's, in, it's in their package. It's just, I think, a package organization stuff so does this make sense or yeah i think so thank okay. you yeah and also i think what's what's important to know is that so i mentioned that the uh the goal of the tidy method is to provide a predictable outcome but it does not mean that you will have or that you will also always have the same column in a table because for a, uh, if you tidy the, the uh, a, a linear model, you can't expect the, the same structure than if you tidy a correlation test or a t-test. So it's just two, two completely different ty types of things. So it will be consistent then you tidy similar things. But if you tidy different things, then, then it, it will have a different structure, but it, it will always be a table and it will always uh, uh, have the same column names if, if possible. Yeah, so let's see some, some examples. Uh, yeah, so from the data set that I show, we will uh, see like a lot of different ways that I think it's it's quite, it, it, it makes sense that if there is a higher elevation gain, then the, then the velocity decreases. So it's more difficult to run if, if, the, if, the, if the elevation gain is higher. So it, seems to quite that there's a quite a strong uh, relationship between the the elevation gain uh, and and then the velocity so yeah so just let's see some some examples for for this tidy method for example you can use a workflow you have to add the model and you can use a formula. Okay, I, I also added the distance here. It doesn't matter that much. And if you fit the workflow, then you can call tidy on it. And it will know that, okay, for a workflow, I have to pull out the, the actual linear model that was fit and call the appropriate tidy method on it. We receive a table which has a row for the intercept and each of the terms. And we have the estimate standard error statistic and then p-value for it. Uh, but you can also use this without workflow, just uh, the fit from the parsnip package. You will have the same results. So it's like, Tidy knows how to pull out the internal linear model and, and tidy it for you as well. Uh, also, I think it's just, just interesting that, that historically Broom existed way before tidy models. 
so that it supports tidy models as well, but also uh, these are. So yeah, I. Yeah, okay, yeah, so for the workflow, there's this extract fit engine, which returns like the bare a little, little linear model, you can use that, which is the same. If you don't use tidy models at all, you just fit a linear model from Bazaar, you can call tidy on it as well. So it's, I, I think it's quite nice that, that that there are really many, many types supported. Okay, so let's move on to the... So I, I just collected some examples. So for example, you can do a correlation test, again, between the velocity and the elevation gain. You can tidy it as well. We see it has a different structure. Uh, but for example, the p-value is called the same, the statistics is called the same, the estimate is called the same. So if, if, if possible that these column names are consistent, but this, this alternative column does, would not make sense here, but it makes sense here, so it's, it's included here. And there's also... Uh, example for a two-sample t-test. So I wanted to check whether uh, people recently, so just in the recent five years or six years, uh, run faster or slower than in the before, in the years before. And I think that they actually run slower. Uh, yeah, but so I, I think if if you don't use something that is like very exotic or very new, then there's a big chance that that there's there's already a tidy method for it in in the Bloom package. Uh, okay. Uh, so the next topic is the infer package. So it's like completely unrelated from, from the previous section. So we saw a tool, the broom tidy, and then we will see a different tool, the infer package. Uh, in my understanding, it's, it's a high level tool for hypothesis testing in the, like in the most common simple cases. I think it's a very good tool if you want to get familiar or you want to teach it, but it won't support uh, like some, some special case or, uh, or something more advanced. So it's, it's, I think it's, it's quite simple for many common cases, but it does not, it, it doesn't aim to be like a super general tool. It, it, it aims to be a simple tool for, for the most common uh, uh, cases. So the basic idea is that you can specify the relationship between variables in your data set. You can specify what is your uh, hypothesis. You can calculate the appropriate statistics either based on a simulation uh, or you can also calculate the appropriate statistics if you have a, like some theoretical di distribution and and it is it is possible to to, to calculate based on that it, it depends on the, the distribution whether it's more, more it's 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 more efficient so sometimes like you have a formula and sometimes you you don't so it's uh, yeah and as i mentioned you will see that so many common tests are supported 
uh, for continuous and, and discrete variables as well. So again, we will see some examples, but there are many more, more supported. I, I try to try to show what's, what's possible. Uh, okay, so the first example is that we want to calculate the p-value uh, for, for independence, and we will calculate this p-value not based on some, some theoretical assumptions, but based on simulation. So first we will uh, calculate the, the actual correlation. Of course, this could be done simpler, but there's this unified uh, interface. So you have your data set, you have to specify the relationship that you are interested in. So whether velocity and elevation gain has a non-zero correlation, and then you can calculate and again, you have a table, so it's it's easy to combine later. And it has a single value. Uh, and if you want, if you want to uh, do a simulation with with permutation, then again, uh, we specify the same relationship. We say that the null hypothesis is, is independence. Uh, then the, the generate is, 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 is the verb for simulation. So you can say that how many times you, how many times you, how many samples you want to create and this, the method which can be used for independence is, is permutation. So if, if you permute the variables, then, then you will have a sample with the assumption from the null hypothesis that, that they are independent. Uh, and again, we can calculate the same statistic that we calculated from the actual data. We can also do it from, from these different samples. And then the result is a table with thousand rows. So for a row for each, each sample, and we have the statistic. And we can also uh, visualize it, which is I think quite nice. So it's like a single function and you, and you have a nice ggplot. And also because it's an actual ggplot object, you can uh, adjust it if, if you want to use a different theme or different colors or different labels or, or whatever. You can then use any kind of ggplot uh, layer that, that you want. So, so they, they provide nice defaults, but, but you are not limited to, to it. Uh, so the visualization just creates the the histogram and then we can add shade p value then you have to uh, pass the actual the actual observed statistic and and specify whether it's a two-sided or one one-sided you don't see a sh shade he here because it's it's so far away so it's not a pretty meaningful test but but you can see the syntax Uh, we can also get it numerically with the get p value function. Uh, yeah, it's, it's zero because it's so far away that with a sample of 1000, it's, it's always on the other side. But I think if we like generated a million or, or, or even more samples, which we don't have time for, then, then we wouldn't have a, a zero, but a zero dot zero 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 one or something like that. Uh, so I think the warning in this case is is not a problem. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, another example is you not only can have uh, p-values, but also confidence intervals. And in that case, you won't do simulation with permutation, but, but bootstrapping makes sense. So bootstrapping is a very general tool if you, if you don't know much about your, your distribution. It, it it works it 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 works quite well. So uh, so I didn't do the observation again. So it it remains the same. And again, I used the one thousand samples. This time, bootstrapping for a confidence interval. We don't need a hypothesis. So we just see. Yes. Can I can I ask a question? Can you uh, just go um, back up to the observed values that you are sure. extrapolated with the correlation, the, the one that you have used for for making this uh, thing? This is permuted, and the other one uh, is this. What is the uh, is uh, minus zero point five six one? Is that right? Yes, so the statistic is correlation. For statistic, there's like a bunch of predefined well uh, functions supported, for example, mean, standard error, or difference in means, correlation, stuff like that. So it depends on what you are interested in. So I said correlation. So basically, it's just uh, the same as you called correlation with the average velocity and the average elevation gain. So, so it is the, the actual correlation between these variables in this data set. Or, <laughs> Sorry, uh, I, I can't hear <laughs> um, Maybe that is, that, uh, is the reason. If you, because correlation, you can find correlation inside that plot. So that's why it's, uh, you find it uh, on a side. You might want to search for if you if you look at the. Can, can you open the the book uh, sure. at the page of the? Uh, you um, mean the actual book? I see the where is the observed value that he calculated for biochemistry, for example. That, that 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 is the reason because at, um, where is it um, here? Uh, as you see, he uses uh, the different in, difference in means. Okay. Yeah, but in this case, yeah. they had a categorical and the numerical variable, so it, it is it was like different variable types. So, but did you try do, doing the different in me, difference in means? For example, I'm just asking if you. Uh, we can try, but I don't think it makes sense for for this case. Oh. So we have two continuous uh, variables, uh, but sure. For example, just to see what happened. Yes, yeah, so it gives an e gives an error that it does not make sense. Uh, or two numeric variables. Okay, so what? Uh, so the the, the best uh, uh, statistics to use is the correlation, is it? Uh, I'm sure there are many others. It's just an example that. Uh, let's see. Because the correlation, you you want it, it's very so it, because the difference in means. Uh, uh, it's for numeric, so for categorical, so you may want to maybe uh, put them in a way that are like dummy variables or something like that. I think it so difference in means is for two groups. Uh, sorry. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but um, yeah, it really depends on what you're trying to do. Because in the book, I think they were comparing two different groups and how they're uh what is it the uh efficiency was and then in 
Ildiko's example, she's just looking at the correlation. So she just used a different call. I, I, think, I think that's the, that's what's going on. Mm -hmm. yeah, because that's why you, you find the, the, that uh, red line uh, so far aside. It, it's, it's just not... because there's a really strong correlation and the null hypothesis is that the correlation is zero and and the data actually has a very strong correlation. So in this case, like what we saw before, uh, the correlation is so strong that you probably wouldn't do a test and just say that, okay, it's, it's clearly strong. Mm -hmm. okay. But I... Yeah, maybe the example is not the best. I, I hope that so we can see how this tool works, e even if even if this is an this is an extreme example. Uh, no, because usually you search for the difference in means, uh, even if you because this is this is a distribution. So you want to find something? Wh why you have been? But able why to would you use the distribution means? there? So we don't have two groups. We don't have two groups in this case. So okay. So the, our new hypothesis is independence. Independence means that they do not have. Co they they are not correlated. Yes. Uh, more or less. So I, I, I'm not sure what's your question. So I use the completely different data set and the completely different hypothesis than the book. But no, I'm just, I'm just saying if, if they're not, uh, they're not categorical, uh, sorry, they're not numerical, but you, they have been counted out because you have obtained a, a distrib uh, distribution. No? Okay, so you have a new a distribution. How did you? How have you been able to obtain a distribution? The distribution is is about the statistics, which is in in our case the correlation between these two variables. So we generated one thousand samples, like one thousand different data sets, which are similar to our original data set with the races and elevation gain and velocity, and in each uh, sample data set, uh, one of the variables is permuted. So like the rows are, are uh, mixed up. So the, 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 this permute means that you take the original data set 1000 times and for each 1000 samples, you mix up the rows in a different way. In a, in a totally random way, you mix up the rows. And then in your toy data set with the mix up rows, you calculate the correlation between these two variables. And then the distribution comes from this 1000 generated uh, data sets. Okay, so... So this, this distribution is not about the elevation gain or the velocity. This distribution is about the correlation calculated in each of the 1000 samples. So you can have this distribution uh, regardless of what statistics you calculate as long as it's, it's a numerical value. So, so and, that's... And that and there you cannot use uh, the, the the difference in means in the permuted we cannot uh, use the difference in means for these two variables if from this race data set we looked at we would look at i don't know how many uh, races women participated in and how many races men participated in then it would make sense to use the difference in means okay. so i think it, it depends on but what relationship or what what kind of question you want to answer? I I just chose this question. Uh, is that is is that okay? Yes, yes, it's clear. So you made okay. a distribution, the correlation distribution, and then you plotted yeah. the, the red line with the correlation of the observed values. Uh, yeah. And that's it, basically. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. okay. so, 
So I, I think it's great that you can have this same kind of plot with, with many different hypotheses and, and many different uh, statistics. So the same is that you will have like generated data sets and you can calculate the statistic from, from, from each generated data set. Okay, so okay. Uh, yeah, okay, so the next example is correlation again, but this time not about p values, but a confidence interval. And then we can use almost the same code, but for, with a bootstrap kind of generation. Uh, yeah, so we can see that with the 95 confidence level, it's somewhere between minus 0 0.61 and uh, I don't know, 52. So, yeah, but I think it is. So these are like quite, quite nice functions. Yeah, you can also, also, also get the exact results. And again, if, if you have different variables or questions, you just have to swap out the variables and the statistics in your example. And, and then you can do that, that kind of test that, that you are interested in. One more thing I wanted to demonstrate is that for some cases, I think like, uh, t-test and z-test and maybe a t-square test or something like that. So like a, a few tests, there it, it is possible to calculate p-values without creating the samples. Uh, and it, it's, it's a bit different, so... Yeah, in this case, it's again, not a very interesting question, but okay, I said that let's imagine that uh, the velocity has a distribution with a mean of seven, I think it's miles per hour, but yeah, pro probably miles per hour. Uh, so we, we only have one variable, we have a point type hypothesis. So we have like an, an, an exact value, we can calculate the statistic. And instead of generate, we can use assume. So we say that, okay, we think that it is a T distribution and we don't have a, a histogram, but, but like a, a curve because it's, in theory, you can you can calculate this very precisely, uh, but but otherwise it, it 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 has a similar logic. And what, so I yeah. So, sorry, what assume does actually does? Uh, it tells that for this. Uh, Well, what, what kind of distribution your uh, data has in theory? Like, so, so what theoretical distribution to use for any kind of calculations later in my, my understanding? But it, I think it, it, it only supports a, a, few, a few kind of distributions like T and Z and, and something like that. So, so the, the good thing about this, so this can be uh, faster and more precise. On the other hand, bootstrapping is, is more general, but, but slower. Uh, okay, so yeah, we, we have some, some time left. Uh, yeah, okay. Again, yes. And one more thing. So previously we looked at uh, 
relationship between two variables or the distribution of one variable. We can also have uh, linear models, but in my understanding, infer does not support other types of models. So, so I think I think only maybe general linear models. So we can say that okay, the velocity. How does it relate to the eight stations and participants? Just some some random <laughs> example and. And if, if, we, if we have a linear model, then we have the specify, which is the same as before, but instead of calculate, we have the fit function. So it's, it's in the place of calculate. And again, this is an example where tidy is called already internally, so you don't have to tidy, but, but you have a, a table. Uh, With an estimate for for these terms in the in the linear model. Let's see what we can do. Uh, okay, we can say that again the hypothesis is independence that these these uh, variables do not affect the velocity. You can use a permutation test, and there's two kind of tests. And in this case, we can so we can either permute just the result, like the velocity, or we can permute these two variables separately. Uh, to be honest, I, I'm not sure when to use which. So it's more like about it. It, it, it is possible with this package, but I'm I'm not sure. Uh, And again, the, the syntax is quite the same. So again, you have the generate. The only difference is that you will use the fit instead of the calculate function. And you can calculate the p-value and you will have a p-value for, for, for all the terms. Yeah, okay, so so let's continue. Uh, yeah, so I was quite confused about it, so I, I won't speak a lot, but there's a reg intervals function in the R sample package, which is I think a short for regression intervals. So in my understanding, it has a, a similar purpose as the infer package and this, this last example with the fit where you have a linear model. It, it, it has a few supported model types. So linear model, general linear model, survivorship models, and maybe one, one more. And, and with a single function call, you can uh, do all these steps. So do the bootstrapping, fitting a model on each of the bootstrap samples, then tidy the resulting model and get the coefficients. And then you have the coefficients for many different models and you can calculate a confidence interval from that. So it's it's a quite nice function. Uh, it it supports some some models, so so not everything. Yeah, so which is unclear for me is how so it, it seems strange that for me at least that 
So there's like one function in art sample, a lot of tools in the infer package. So it's, it's not very clear that how these relate to me. Yeah, okay, so, so the last topic is uh, is about what to do when you want to do your own statistical inference and maybe for a model which is not supported by either parsnip or there's not an ANOVA method for it, but you want to know whether a variable is important. So, so this will be a general tool, but I will use again the linear model to so that it's it, it runs in a short time. Uh, and for a linear model, you won't need you wouldn't need this. Uh, because you can use just just an ANOVA or something like that, but you can use this example with with any kind of model and and any kind of test. So so we will we will compare uh, three models. Uh, the velocity as a function of the elevation gain, the distance, and the aid stations. The simpler one is uh, just uses elevation gain and distance, and the third smallest one uses only elevation gain. So we will compare these these three, and all three models will use a simple linear linear regression. And as in the book, uh, we will use this Akaika information criteria to, uh, to compare uh, the model models, uh, how, how well do they fit. Uh, so at first glance, we have different values but the idea is that from this so this minimal model has a higher uh, value which means a less uh, less good model but it's hard to know whether it's due to chance or it's like a significant difference so we can use bootstrapping and again bootstrapping can be quite slow, but also it, it's, a, it's a really general tool which you can use for, for any kind of uh, distribution model tests and so on. So, so what tools uh, guide the models provide us? There's a bootstraps function in the R sample package which is similar to the generate function in the infer package. So we can tell how many uh, bootstrap samples to create and it will uh, create those for you. I think the apparent is about whether you also keep the original data as a different sample. Uh, and then with, with mutate and map, uh, uh, okay, let's see what kind of data this shows. Yes, yeah, so uh, we have a table in one column. It, it has one row for each bootstrap sample and one column contains uh, an R split object with the bootstrap data and the rows which were not uh, selected to that bootstrap sample and an ID. So we can use this splits column to, to fit a model. So we will use a plain parsnip model fit, simple linear model, use the the different formulas 
and this is just the way this this art sample bootstrapping works is that it provides the actual bootstrap sample as as an as the analysis part and the assessment part is the rows which were not selected to that uh, bootstrap sample and with the extract fit engine function we get the bazar linear model so it, it's like not with this you get the actual model which is now not a tidy models object but, but but the regular linear model and then you can use this uh, function to calculate this uh, model summary so with mutate and and the map we can do like anything we want here and then we will have uh, The value for 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 all the bootstrap samples. Let's see. Uh, so we see that uh, the the eight stations not really help. In addition to so these have very similar distributions, the full and the partial. So the eight stations did, did not really help, but the minimal with only the elevation gain then we have the elevation gain in the distance so it's, it's like significantly smaller so the distance had the model we can see from from this data uh, we can also calculate uh, yeah it is quite random so only in 40 percent of the cases is it uh, better to use the eight, so it's it's the p value would be like uh, it's 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 not not good in this case. It's it's still not uh, very significant, but it's 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 better. Uh, Okay, just um, yeah. Sorry, I think I missed some code. Just. Well, never mind. So. Uh, Yeah, sorry, I, I think I mixed it up because it, it, it was uh, quite slow. So I saved out some the, the model results in and then, then loaded it back. Uh, but, at, uh, but anyway, it's, it's uh, another example that also with uh, mutate and map, I saved not only this information criteria but also the actual model coefficients and the, and the p-value and standard error and, and estimate about the model coefficients and then we can visualize that yeah i i yeah it's it's silly because it, it, it only has oh, okay no it's it's not so uh So with this mutate and map, we had it in a list column and with unnest, we can have a table which we can easier, easily uh, visualize. Uh...
Yeah, so with this unnesting like we have a, a playing table, playing table with term and estimate for all the bootstrap samples. And we can see the distributions and yeah, I should have used bigger bins. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, okay, it, it, it looks nicer. So from here we can also see that the that the aid station is, is not that relevant for the model. Uh, yeah, and one one last function is is that so so we have like terms and estimates for for all the bootstrap sample. Uh, and if, if we have like a column with the tidied uh, summary about the model coefficients, then there's there is a helper function to calculate the the confidence intervals, uh, which would not be that difficult, but it, it's 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 a nice helper again. So it's it's another like a small piece in, in the puzzle that, that that you can use. Okay, well, uh, sorry that I spoke so much. I I didn't imagine that I would take the full hour, but I hope that you see that. So we have quite a few pieces in the puzzle, but I think you you have to know which to apply and when and and also there are a lot of more functionalities in the infer package. Uh, yeah, okay, so so thanks. Uh, any more questions? It was a pretty Thank tough you. chapter, but yeah, thanks for presenting. <laughs>